I want you to have a look at this income statement of Colgate. Here we have three years of data, 2019, 2020 and 2021. Why don't you have a quick look and analyze it? Obviously, your question would be how to start. There is so much of data that is provided here, right? Sales, cost of sales, etc, etc. So how do you start? What about the balance sheet? If you have a look at Colgate's balance sheet, there is so much of data again. Assets, liabilities, shareholders, equity, right? Don't worry, I'll help you. We start by looking at the common size statement. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj from wallstreetmojo.com and in this video, we'll look at what is common size statements, how they can be used and why they are so important. So let's get started. So what is a common size statement? As the word suggests, common, right? So if you look at this income statement right now, what can be a common thing that can help me analyze this income statement? So essentially, common size statement says that, why don't you bring every item on the income statement or the balance sheet as a common denominator, which is more intuitive to be able to understand that. So if you look at this income statement, sales is the largest number, right? It starts from the top and then we start deducting the costs and other items, right? So sales is usually the largest number. And if we divide each and every item which is there in the income statement by sales, we should probably have some intuitive understanding of how much is the cost as a proportion of sales, how much is depreciation as a proportion of sales, that will be more intuitive and that's what is called as a common size statement. So what we will do here is we'll divide each and every line item by sales. So let's see how it is. Okay. So let's divide the sales by sales first. Okay. So it comes out to be hundred percent because that's the first item we are dividing the same number. What about cost of goods sold? Let's divide cost of goods sold by sales and what we get is 40%. So Obviously, when we just look at $8,000 in isolation, it doesn't make any sense. But when we convert this into percentages using common size statement, it starts giving us more depth. So what this means is out of every $100 that you earn, 40 is spent in cost of goods sold, right? So that's how, you know, common size statements can be pretty helpful. So let me quickly create this common size statement for all the other items. So here it is. So what we find is that the gross margins is 60%, selling general and admin expenses 10%, EBITDA is 50%. So the formula for a common size statement for income statement is nothing but all the line items we have, right? And we divide each of the line items by sales, okay? And you basically multiply it by 100 so that you can represent this in the form of percentages, right? So that's the formula of common size statement of income statement. But let's say if we want to understand what is the common size formula for uh, balance sheet, then what will that be? Fairly simple. Each and every line item is divided by what is the biggest denominator in the balance sheet? It's either the total assets or total liabilities, right? So the answer is total assets or liabilities right so obviously you can multiply this by 100 so as to express this in a percentage form so these are the two very simple formulas now that having understood all the basics of common size statement let's go back to the colgate uh, case study which we were looking at and see how the common size statement for colgate looks like so here is the data of uh, colgate formula for the past six years so i put that in excel in a neat format so that we can do common size statements right so here is the income statement and again we also have the balance sheet so let's uh, do the common size statement of each one by one so here we have the net sales numbers okay for each of the years all right and all the other line items are like this so i will scroll down and uh, there's a place where i have created uh, a space for calculating common size statements right so that we can do the analysis as well 
So what is the common size statement of income statement? Each and every line item will be divided by sales, right? So in this case, net sales will be divided by net sales, right? So this will be equal to 100% as we just discussed earlier. Likewise, what about cost of sales? Cost of sales divided by net sales, right? So we are trying to, uh, you know, calculate the common size statement for all the line items, right? So let me quickly complete this so that we can directly jump to the analysis part of it. Okay, so here we go. All right, so let's look at this common size statement carefully. Look at this cost of sales to start with. It's around 40%, right? So it has been 40% since the past six years. That's a very interesting thing to observe about Colgate. Likewise, let's look at this EBIT margins. It was 26% initially and now it is 19.1%. What has happened, right? So we are getting wealth of information as well as questions that we need to dig out from the annual report. Likewise, let's look at this net income margins. 16.1% in 2016, but now it is 12.4%. So what we are getting essentially from these numbers is knowledge information about this company as such. And if you just look at these numbers, these are nothing. We, you cannot even make any sense from you know just looking at these direct numbers. But when we convert this into a common denominator, that is the common size statement, we start getting this wealth of information, which is very useful for financial analysis, right? So this was about the income statement. Let's go and look at how we can do the balance sheet common size statement. Now. So here is the balance sheet of Colgate. We have the past six years of data and let's find out the common size statement. So uh, let me scroll down and I have created a place where we can calculate the common size statement of balance sheet. So here we go cash and cash equivalent let's go here in this cell so common size statement of balance sheet is each and every line item will be divided by total assets or total liabilities you can divide by either because they both are equal right so let's do that cash and cash equivalents when i scroll up this is 832 divided by your total assets that is 15040 all right so that comes out to be 5.5 percent likewise you can do for the remaining receivables 1297 divided by 15040 so it comes out to be 8.6 percent so let me complete the common size statement of this balance sheet fairly quickly so that we can directly jump to the analysis part of it okay so here we go okay so we have this vertical analysis of uh, the balance sheet now and let's look at some of the interesting observations here. Look at the cash and cash equivalents. So it was 10.8% of the total assets in 2016, but now it is 5.5%. Very interesting observations here, right? Likewise, let's look at uh, property, plant and equipment, 31.7%. And now it is 24.8% at degrees, right? Uh, let's move forward. Let's look at... Uh, the long-term debt, 53.8 percent, and it is now 47.8 percent now. So this is like you know, it is again showing a declining trend. So we get lots of interesting observations when we do this common size statement of balance sheet as well. So again, if we just look at this number, we won't be able to make any sense at all. But when we convert this into the common denominator, that is the common size statement we get this wealth of information. So this is highly recommended as a first step towards doing financial analysis. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.